Welcome back. We are ready to move on to section two of linear equations, um, chapter one. And this section deals with <clears throat> solving systems of equations. So a system of equations is when we have two or more linear equations. And to solve a system of, system of equations, we need to look for their solution. And if you just have one line, um, it has infinite solutions. Another line, it has infinite solutions. However, there's only one pair of points. There's only one pair of x, y values that will work in both equations. That's considered to be the solution. So what that looks like graphically is this is the point where the lines cross. So that's what we're looking for is where do the lines cross? So this could result in one of three situations if we're looking at a pair of linear equations. We could have a line and another line that crosses it, and that crossing point where they intersect, that is the solution. So that would be an x, y coordinate pair where those cross, that's our solution. You could have a line that doesn't get crossed by the other line, so they're always the same distance apart. They never cross, which means there's no solution. So this would be happen whenever we have parallel lines. And then we could also have infinite solutions, which is where we have one line and then we graph another line or we get the graph of the other equation and realize that there, it's right on top of the first one. So essentially, these, this happens when you have two equations that are the equations of the same line. So these are the three things that can result when we work with a pair of linear equations. And this is what it looks like graphically. We will come back and address what that means algebraically as well. All right, so we're gonna work on solving by graphing first. So when we solve by graphing, we're gonna graph each of our equations individually and then look for that point where they intersect. Okay, so we're gonna start out with number one. We have y equals negative 5 thirds x minus six and y equals 1 sixth x plus five. Both of these equations are in slope intercept form. So all we have to do is identify our slope and identify our intercept and we should be able to graph these. So this uses what we talked about in chapter one, section one. So on that first equation, the intercept is negative six. So it crosses the y axis at negative six and the slope is negative five thirds. So we plot our point at negative six. And in this, one, in this case, I chose to go up five and back three because I didn't have enough room to go the other direction, okay? So there's my graph for that equation. For line two, we have a slope of one sixth and a y-intercept of five. So we're gonna put that on our line. We've got our y-intercept and then we go up one and over six or down one and back six. And right there is where they cross. So that is our point of intersection, that's our solution. So we need to identify that, and it is the point negative six, four. All right, next up, we have number three. So six x minus five y equals negative 45, two x plus two y equals negative four. These ones are not in slope intercept form. So you could change them to slope intercept form to graph them, or you can look for the x, y intercepts like we did in chapter one, section one. That's what I'm going to do. You can do whichever one you prefer. So on the first equation, six x minus five y equals 45, to find the x intercept, we plug in zero for y, and that gives us negative six x minus zero equals 45. So we just take negative 45 divided by six, and that gives us negative seven and a half. So that's gonna be a point right there. Then we go and we find our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is at nine because if we substitute in zero for x, we get negative 45y, or sorry, negative five y equals negative 45, divide and we get nine. So that's the point right there. So we plot those two points and connect their dots and that gives us our line. 
On the second equation, 2x plus 2y equals negative 4, we have the same process. We're going to find our x-intercept by plugging 0 in for y, which gives us negative 2. We find our y-intercept by plugging in 0 in, plugging 0 in for x, which also gives us negative 2. So this crosses the x-axis at negative 2 and the y-axis at negative 2. So there's our line. And that point right there is where they cross. And that is negative 5, 3. All right, the last one we're going to do together is number 5. And you could do intercepts on this, or you could do um, slope-intercept form. This first equation, really the only thing I need to be able to put it in slope-intercept form is to divide everything by 2. So I'm going to take that first equation and divide everything by 2, and we're going to get 9x plus or sorry, 4x plus 9. I just realized this isn't the one I want to go over with you. So write that down, y equals 4x plus 9. I've just helped you out with um, putting that one in slope-intercept form, but we're actually going to go over number 4. Okay, so on number 4, I do want to use the intercepts for this first equation. So um, we're going to find the x-intercept by plugging 0 in for y. And that makes that point go away, gives us an x-intercept of negative 4. And we're going to find the y-intercept by plugging 0 in for x, divide by 6, we get negative 2. So negative 4 and negative 2 give us that line, crossing at negative 4 and negative 2. On the second equation, it's in slope-intercept form, so we're going to use our slope which is negative one half and our y-intercept of negative five to plot that line. Now my lines aren't drawn super well on the iPad, but you can kind of tell that these two lines end up being parallel. And so if they're parallel, that means there is no solution. That's why I wanted to make sure we covered that one so that you saw an example of that. Um, so what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and go over questions two, five, and six. And when you come back, we will go over those solutions um, and I will show you the steps for those problems. Okay, let's take a look at the solutions to those other three problems. So number two, we have a horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at five, and then we have a line that crosses the y-axis at seven with a slope of two, and our intersection on that one is right here at negative one, five. Next step, we're gonna do that one that I helped you out with, number five. So on number five, we have y equals negative four x plus nine, gives us an intercept of nine, and we get this line right here. Two, 24 plus four y equals x, Depend, just depends on how you um, solve this one, but most likely you probably put it in slope-intercept form. Notice that if we continued, we wouldn't be able to graph our x-intercept, so you kind of have to do slope-intercept form on that one just because of the limitations of our grid. Um, so on that one, we get an intercept of negative six and a slope of one-fourth, and these two lines cross at negative four-seven. On number six, both of these could be put into slope-intercept form pretty simply. On this one, you just have to go through and make everything positive, which gives us y equals x plus six. And on this one, you go through and divide everything by three, which gives us y equals x plus six as well. So these are the same line, which means they have infinite solutions. All right. Next up, we have substitution. So solving by substitution is a four-step process. Step one, we isolate one of our variables. Step two, we substitute into the other equation using that isolated variable. Um, step three, we solve. And then step four, we finish the problem by getting the other variable that we're missing. So we always wanna end up with an X and a Y. Um, number seven is where we're gonna start. And this one's partially done for us because they've already isolated the variables. Um, we have y by itself in both equations. Now you only have to isolate a variable in one of the equations. If the variable's isolated in both equations, that's fine, it's not a big deal. 
essentially what we're doing is we're saying this negative 7x minus 1 and this x minus 9 are both equal to y. Therefore, they're equal to each other. So I'm going to take this 7x, negative 7x minus 1, <clears throat> and plug it in to the other equation in place of y. I'm substituting negative 7x minus 1 for y because they are equal. So when I do that, I'm going to get negative 7x minus 1 equals x minus 9. Now all we have to do is solve for x. So we're going to add 7x to both sides, add 9 to both sides. We get 8 equals 8x, which means x equals 1. Now that I've got x, I still need to get y. So I'm going to take my 1 that I got for, number, for the x, and I'm going to plug it in to that second equation for x. So I'm going to take y equals 1 minus 9, which means y equals negative 8. So I've got my x and I've got my y. My final answer is the point 1, negative 8. All right, next up, we're going to do number 9. So on number 9, we need to find a variable to isolate. So I don't have a y equals, I don't have an x equals for either of these equations. I need to get one of those things. So what you want to look for here is a variable like this one that doesn't have a number in front of it. That usually means it will be the easiest one to isolate. Not always, but usually. So to get that y by itself, I'm going to move that 7x to the other side. So I'm going to go y equals 22 minus 7x. So that was the isolating step. Now that I've got y equal to an expression that uses x, I'm going to substitute that 22 minus 7x and put it in place of y in the other equation. So I go 6x minus 5 times, and I've got this placeholder right here. This is where y was equals 28, and I'm going to put this right there. So 22 minus 7x. Distribute and combine like terms. Get x by itself. So we've got 41x equals 82, which means x is equal to 2. Now, I have solved, so I isolated, I substituted, I solved, now I need to finish. And I'm going to finish by taking that 2, and I could plug it into either of the original equations that I had, or I could plug it into this new one that I formed using that second equation, which is exactly what I'm going to do because it's going to be pretty simple. So y, minus, y equals 22 minus 7 times 2 or y equals 22 minus 14, means y is eight, and our solution is the point two, eight. All right, one more for us to do together to cover substitution here. We're gonna look at number 11. All right, so that first equation on number 11 is the one that I think would be easiest to isolate y. I understand that this y has no number in front of it, but it's negative. I can also isolate y in this first equation pretty easily by dividing everything by 2. So that's why I chose to go with that one. There's no right or wrong here. You could do it the other way, and you should get the same answer that we get when we're done. So I chose to isolate y in the first equation, which means I'm going to substitute this in for y in the second equation. So I have 3x minus... And then in place of y, notice I'm using parentheses, 3x plus, y, plus 5, so that comes from there, equals 5. Distribute your negative and start to combine like terms. We notice 3x minus 3x cancels out, and we get negative 5 equals 5. If I try to get x by itself, the x goes away. And so what this tells us is that we're in one of those situations that were the alternatives to having one solution. We are, this indicates that we either have a problem that has no solution or a problem that has infinite solutions. So what you want to ask yourself if you get into a situation like this where you lose all your variables is 
does this statement, is this statement negative five equals five? Is it always true or never true? A negative five never equals five. So this is not true. This is false statement. If it's never true, that means there is no solution, okay? So since this is never true, there's no solution. I wanna go back and add a couple things to your notes on that front page. So on those two situations where we had a parallel um, pair of lines and two equations that gave us the same line, when we work problems algebraically, okay, so when we do the algebra instead of the graphing, we will have one of two things in these situations. You'll either get a statement of two things that it says are equal that are not, okay, that's never true, so that's no solution. The other option is you're gonna get a statement where it says that two things are equal and they actually are equal. That means that this statement is always true and you have infinite solutions, okay? So if you just remember, never true means no solution, always true means infinite solutions, then anytime you end up with one of these, it should be very easy to decide which of those it is. Never, none, always, infinite, okay? So the last thing I want you to do is to pause the video, go through numbers eight, 10, and 12 on your own, then come back and we will go ahead and look at those solutions. Okay, so for those three problems, here is the work and the solutions to those um, equations, to those systems. So on the first one, um, y was already isolated, so we just substitute negative five x plus 30 in for y for the second equation. Distribute that three, combine like terms and isolate x and we get x is positive six. I chose to plug that back into that first equation. So y equals negative five times six plus 30. So that comes from this equation and this value of x multiply negative six times, or negative five times six is negative 30, and negative 30 plus 30 is zero. So that solution is six zero. On number 10, I felt like the easiest variable to isolate here was the x on the first equation. So I moved my y to the other side, which gave me 53 plus seven y. Then I plugged this in for x. So I've got negative four minus five y equals 19. And then in that parentheses, I put that 53 plus seven y. Once I had that, I just distribute my four, combine like terms, add to get rid of the 12. We get negative 33 y equals 231, which means y is negative seven. I then use this equation right here and the negative seven to solve for y or solve for x. So x is 53 plus seven y, 53 plus seven times negative seven is 53 minus 49, which is four. So my solution is four negative seven. And finally, number 12. This one is probably the trickiest one because we do have some fractions to work with. So there is no way to work this problem where you don't end up using fractions. So what you need to do is just decide which variable do you wanna isolate. Your work might look different than mine. I isolated the X, no, the Y in the first equation. So here's my work for that. So the blue is what I did first. So first step was to move the four X to the other side which made it minus four X. So negative three Y equals negative five minus four X. Then I divided everything by negative three and this is the equation that I got. So I'm using this five thirds plus four thirds X in place of Y. That's what I did right here. 
So 5x plus 7 times in the place of y, 5 thirds plus 4 thirds x equals negative 17. Next step, we just distribute that 7. So that gives us negative 35 thirds and 28 thirds. Combine like terms, grab your calculator, use that ABC key. 5 plus 28 thirds is 14 and a third x. Se negative 17 minus negative 35 thirds is negative 28 and two thirds. Divide and we get negative two for x. So this came up here. Now, I substituted that into my second equation. So right here, I'm using that second equation and I'm substituting negative two in for x. So four times negative two is negative eight, minus three y equals negative five, add eight to both sides. We get negative three y equals three and y is negative one. So I've got my x and I've got my y, put those together and I get my coordinate for my solution. So that is substitution. For your assignment, you will be doing um, this homework four page, front and back. So you've got six graphing problems and eight substitution problems. When you do this worksheet, um, you will never get any fractions in the points for your answers, okay? So I'm not saying you won't work, have to work with fractions, but you'll never have um, fractions here in your points. Um, and you're gonna have two, two problems that um, have either no solution or infinite solutions, and that's front and back, okay? So two problems where you don't get an XY coordinate pair that are gonna be one of those unique situations, okay? All right, so that is solving by graphing and substitution. Please let me know if you have any questions or if you need any additional help. Um, you can send me an email. You can um, send me a message on Canvas, but uh, let me know if you have any other questions.